Today, we are in Providence, Rhode Island, which is the capital city of the state of Rhode Island. And we are going to speak to ex-mayor Buddy Cianci, 21-year mayor in the capital city of America's smallest state. This is Capitalism 2012. All right, here it is at nine minutes after the hour, four o'clock here in southeastern New England as we drive you home. Buddy Cianci Show between three and six every single day on WPRO and 99.7 FM. I got a call not that long ago saying uh, that a fellow named Henry Rollins a true renaissance man wanted to interview me. By the way, he's also been to Providence a number of times where he's performed at the famous Lupo's Heartbreak Hotel. Henry Rollins, welcome to Providence once again. Why the hell do you want to interview me? Well, you are a, a beloved son of this state. Oh, is that right? In your opinion, what are the, the main ingredients to being a good mayor? What, what are the tasks of a mayor? So I can tell you there are, there's only four or five things that a mayor has to do. But let's not make it compl complicated because it isn't complicated. Number one, you ought to have a safe city. If the city's not safe, no one's going to go there, from neighborhoods to downtown. So you have to have a police department that you can depend on, that's well-trained, and that is civilized. And that is uh, not going to violate anybody's constitutional rights and realize that if you don't have discipline in a police department, what you end up with is an armed mob. And you can't have that. Number two, you have to have, obviously, a good education system. I think we've pretty much not failed at it, but we could do a lot better by giving teachers the authority to teach what they, what they have to teach, giving them a, a, a less control from a central district, more control to local schools and parents, those types of things. Uh, can, in charter schools, more of those, they can work. Uh, so a good educational system. Number three, you have to have decent housing. And if you don't have decent housing, no one's gonna live in the city. It has to be affordable. Otherwise, uh, you, they're not gonna live here. And I think the next thing you have to do is provide a job for somebody, or an atmosphere, not give them a job, but provide an atmosphere to have a job, have the right, the right economic climate. And, uh, and with government assistance, if you must, for instance, tax credits, we, I remember we did tax credits uh, to rehab buildings that were old in the city. And we, uh, we, we also started loan programs for restaurants that started in the city of Providence. That's why we are, we're a culinary uh, center, because the last person a banker wants to see is a, is a restaurateur. So the city got in that business because we were in the destination business and so we got involved in that business. And then the fifth thing is having a cultural life and a recreational dimension to a city that makes people really want to live in a city. So whether it's funding, funding performing art centers or preparatory theaters or building ice rinks or bringing hockey teams in, that's what makes a city alive. And that's what, you gotta make a city smell like a city, talk like a city, walk like a city. And, um, and so those are the five things. Don't get involved in the, in the other issues. So, I mean, if they ask, you, ask me, but should we invade Iran? Or should, uh, that's not my job. That's not my job. When I was mayor of Providence, uh, people would ask me, when I left office, what do you think the biggest contribution you made? And, you know, it wasn't me. Everybody in that city worked very hard, the private sector, the public sector. I just happened to be mayor and was kind of a focal point. But we never could have accomplished what we accomplished in that city if we didn't have the support and the coalitions with all different kinds of groups. And, um, and that required, you know, a little orchestration. However, the one contribution that a public officer uh, or public official should be able to say when he leaves office is that he raised the, the esteem of his constituency to levels they never thought they could achieve. And I think that's what happened in Providence, because in the 70s, there were a lot of people leaving the city, a lot of people exiting the city, and then by the time 2000 came around, 2002, people were proud to say that they were from the city. And they had more self-respect and more self-esteem, and that got them more involved and got them to invest in their homes, invest in their businesses, and uh, we were successful. Uh, that's how you measure your success, what people think of themselves and their government and their, and their city after you've left. Everything you said, I'm 100% on board with. And I can't think of any partisan lean to anything you said, in that it just seems to be pro-people for everyone. All the boats get lifted. All right. Henry Rollins, he'll be at the Lupo's tonight, a true Renaissance man, and um, we can, he's a Grammy Award-winning performer, and it was very delightful to talk to, and I appreciate the fact that you included me in your, in your show. Thank you, sir. Okay, Henry, thank you. Our work here is done in beautiful Providence, Rhode Island. And now we go onwards, onwards, onwards to Hartford, Connecticut on the Capitalism 2012 tour.